What is up guys, TSL here, back with a brand new video. In today's video, I will be explaining to you guys how to make a loop, what loops do, and the different kinds of loops that we have in Roblox. So, first thing you want to do is, as always, make a script in our very beloved server script service, and uh, I'll show you how to do this. So basically, when we have a, when we talk about loops, we have three to four different ty types of things. Um, and this depends really on what you consider a loop. You have three actual loops and then like a wannabe loop, which we'll explain later in the video. All right, so anyways, we have two different types of for loops. One is a like a counting for loop, I like to call it. So the way you make this is you use the for keyword and then you make like a variable name and usually with loops you use i and then you give it a starting value, which is z for me is usually zero or one depending on what I'm doing. So we'll just start at one for now. And then we put a comma, then you put the end value, which we will do 10. And then here you have the optional step value. So if you want it to go up by, if you want it to count by two, you'll put two here. So if I print I'll I every time we loop through this, it will loop from one to 10, counting up two every time. So, if we look in the output, what we get is 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. Well, we get 9 instead of 10 because we start at 1 and go by 2, so you actually can't get 10. But if we start at 0, now you see we get, we'll get 0 through 10. Yep, 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Or we can change this to like 0 0.5 and... As you see, we get 0, 0 0.5, 1, 1 1.5, all the way up to 10. So you can also do this in reverse for a reverse countdown. You can start at 10 and go down to 0. And you actually, actually, you need these to set the step for this to negative 1. Because by default, the step is 1, so you won't have to specify 1 if you just want to go up by 1. But see, you go, we start at 10 and go all the way down to 0. So that's a, that's a pretty simple loop, probably the simplest you're going to get, and that's probably actually the one you're going to use the least. Now the second type of loop is a for, another for loop, and this one is a little bit different. So I'm just going to make a dictionary and I'll make an array. So the first thing we'll have like a, let's just say person, just like how we used in the first video of this series. And we'll do like eyes is equal to blue. I will do age is equal to 123 and we'll do why not uh, height is equal to I don't know this is seven feet all right so now what we'll do is make an array as well and this one will just be like 124 0, 8, and 82. And actually, we'll do like one more, like 421. All right, so now we have a person in an array, and now we have our things that we could loop through. So the first part we'll do is the dictionary. Here we'll do for um, i, standing for index. So I'll just do for index, comma, v. You usually do for i, comma, v, which stands for for index, comma, value. Then you use in pairs, the pairs keyword, to iterate through something. There's also a better feature on Studios that will allow you to do this without pairs, which I have enabled, but since you guys might not, I'll just use pairs for this video, because that's common and doesn't hurt. So basically, then you inside these pairs, you'll have to put what you want to loop through. So since we're doing the dictionary first, we'll do the person. So now what we can do is we can print out... Uh, our person we'll just print out our person has or our person is slash has or we'll just do our person is of slash has and then we'll concatenate put a space and we'll concatenate our index which in our case will be either eyes age or height depending on where we are in the loop and then we'll um go back here and we'll put is of 
and then we'll just concatenate uh, the value as well. Value. So now what we should get is first we should get our person is of slash has eyes blue, and then we should get our person is of slash has age um, one two three aka 123 and then our person is of slash has height 7 feet so if we go ahead and play this as you see we get our person is of slash has eyes blue our person is of slash has age 123 and height 7 feet we could also we should have had a space but that doesn't really matter so basically uh, another thing you can do with this is like well, actually we'll save that for the array uh, version. So speaking of which, that is, that's basically it. The first parameter gives you the index, and as you remember from the previous, or not previous, but the first video in the series, the index is this first thing, aka the thing on the left side of the equal sign, and that's what the first thing, i slash index, gives you, and uh, the second thing, the value, is just the thing on the right side of the equal sign. Now note, you can call these whatever you want. I could call this kg and I could call this sfr. And then if I just do kg and sfr here, we'll get the same result as before. Because that's basically just like a variable kind of that just gets changed every iteration of the loop. Now every time you loop, it's called a new iteration and yeah. So you'll be hearing me say that throughout this video. Now the next thing we'll do is with our array. I'll change this back to index and value. Now in our array, you see we only have values, but Roblox automatically gives you an index of starting at one and going all the way to the length of the array. So if we print index.value in, first of all, we gotta change this to array and index, and we'll just add a space and value. What we should get now is um, array colon or we'll d whatever we'll just leave it like that value. So we should get our person it uh, our person has uh, one hundred twenty four or has one space one hundred twenty four. Our person has two space zero eight or it might just give us eight, and then our person has um, three space 82 and our person has 4 space 421 so if we go ahead and test this you'll see that's exactly what we get and yeah it just gave us 8 so this is the index once again which Roblox automatically creates with arrays from 1 to the length of the array and then this is the value which is what you actually put in your array now a common use case for this is if we delete this we'll just make a variable and this will be equal to workspace children and this will be equal to game dot workspace colon get children now this get children method gets everything that's a child of the workspace but actually let's just do get descendants because why not and this will get everything that's in the workspace even if we have like a part in here or let's say we have a click detector in here which we'll learn about in a later video uh, if we have a click detector in here using get children would only return camera, terrain, and base plate, but using get descendants will return camera, this Archimedes folder inside camera, terrain, base plate, and the click detector in terrain. Now what we can do with this is we can loop through our workspace children and we can print um, index dot dot and space value dot dot is a child of the workspace and now what we should get is as you'll see uh in technic concatenate instance with string right you can't concatenate an instance so here we'll just have to uh do that or we'll still be getting an error because we'll also have to do that the comma automatically gives you a space so one camera is a child of the workspace two base plate is a child of the workspace three click detector is a child of the workspace and four terrain is the child of the workspace now i should also say that this is a descendant but that doesn't really matter all right and yeah that's the third loop i mean the second loop or yeah it's the third actually 
So that is that is that. Um, and yeah. So the next thing we have is a while loop. And actually, there's a few more loops. So the next thing we have is a while loop. This takes in a condition. Most of the times, you'll just put while true do, or you can say like a while. I don't know, like a is greater than b, and then we can have a, a is equal to equal to 10, and b is equal to 31. And then here you can just make like every time say a is equal to math dot random uh, one comma 40, and we could do the same thing with b. So b is equal to math dot random one comma 40. And also we have to add a test dot weight of let's say 0 0.5. You have to add a weight. It doesn't have to be a 0 0.5. Just you could just put weight like that. But otherwise this will crash. Yeah. All right. So and this will keep running. And actually what we'll also do is every time we will print a comma b. And then this will print and keep running all the way until A gets a random number that's bigger than B's random number. So if we test this out, uh, if we, first of all, let's just put that there. And now, oh, well, the reason this isn't running is because, let's say, while A is less than B, so until A gets a greater number than B. All right, that was my fault. All right, so now you should see we got 10 and 31. So A was 10, B was 31, and then the next time it looped, A was 11 and B was 13. And if we try this again, 10, 31, because that's the starting, and then 8 and 16, and then it just stops for some reason. Oh, because if I add this here, then we'll see the actual numbers. All right, so 39 and 4. All right, well, it stopped because 39 is greater than 4. So if we try this one more time, 22 is greater than 17, so it stops again. All right, so we can also do a similar thing with a loop called repeat, and then you can add a delay. So we'll do like test.wait of one second, and then you can add an until condition of like 10 or anything you want. But let's just do 10 for now, and we'll, we'll just make, make basically make this like the for loop we started at the beginning of the video. So we could do local count. So local counter is equal to zero. And then here we'll just do counter plus equals one. And then we can print counter as well. All right, so as you see, it prints one, and well, we've put until 10, but we have to put until counter is equal to 10. So, so now we get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And as you saw earlier, that was actually a good demonstration because this repeat wait or this repeat until is guaranteed to run at least one time, unlike a while loop. So yeah, uh, that's basically it. Another thing I was going to tell you about the in the beginning of the video is with functions, you can also have something called a recursive function, which is basically like a loop. So basically you'll specify a function and we'll call it like add a comma b comma c and what we'll do is we'll say say local a or local 
res is equal to a plus b. And we'll actually take in. All right, so basically, a re recursive function is when a function calls itself. So this is recursive. This will call itself, and it, this will run infinitely. I don't, I don't, I can't really think of a good use case to show you guys right now, as you won't use these that often. Basically, just no recursive function is when a function calls itself. So yeah. Uh, that is it for today's video. If you guys learned anything new from this video and this helped you out, please remember to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications so you don't miss out on the next video. Which reminds me, the last video of this week for this series will be tomorrow at 12 a or 12 p.m. Eastern. So, uh, see you then. Take care. Bye.